Welcome back to the 6.5 Summit 2024. It's day one and we are talking all things AI, regardless of the track. AI is on everybody's mind. And this year is about two things. It's about enterprises capturing the AI value, but also the extended build out of AI in the data center and the data center edge. Dan, we're talking AI again, isn't that great? <laughs> Yeah, well, you remember when we were coming up with the theme for this year, it was all about really being able to help companies bring value, yes. right? There was so much kind of talk about this, this, this CapEx, this big capture, all the dollars were going towards GPUs, GPUs, GPUs. Right. Behind this, there needed to be so much more, Pat. And that's what this event, AI Unleashed here at the 6.5 Summit, is really all about. No, that's right. And, and Dan, I know I use this a lot, but I talk about the quadrangle, right? quadrangle of compute, which says you really have to have balanced system between compute, uh, memory, storage, and networking. And if anything, any one of those gets out of whack, you can't bring full value that the system brings, that the quadrangle brings. And data center storage is tremendously valuable with the amount of data that comes in for ingest, you're training it, you're performing rag on it, you're sending results back, you're storing it for long-term storage, it becomes very, very important. We have to have, happen to have with us two folks from Solidime, which I hear is the market share leader in data center SSDs. Great to see you, both of you. Hey, morning Thank guys. You. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Yeah, so uh, Dave and Greg, great to have you on the show. Maybe we can hit first off, uh, Tell us what Solidime does. I talked about it a little bit, but, but let's hear a little bit more. Yeah, well, a little bit of background on Solidime. We were uh, acquired by SK Hynix back in 2020. Uh, we were originally the, uh, the NAND products group, right, at Intel. And so we came over about that time frame. We closed the deal uh, a little bit more than two years now. Uh, one thing that does make us unique, kind of like what you were saying, is that uh, as opposed to kind of everybody else in sure. kind of the NAND market, we are laser focused on data center storage. Uh, we see that as the, uh, the biggest market in all the NAND, the fastest growing market in all the NAND, and it's going to keep going. So it's, it's really our focus for that reason. Well, David, uh, let's talk about something that's probably near and dear to the hearts of just about everybody that's involved in AI, and that's scalability, right? And this can come through a couple of different lenses. You know, of course, one is you have companies, uh, our data is showing massively involved in POCs right now, right? So yeah. it's kind of the idea to implementation scale. And then you've got scale like things like, uh, you know, infrastructure and power. And that's another thing that's going on. Talk about the challenges though that you're seeing here at Solidime as it relates to scaling. AI. Well, yeah, so obviously the, uh, the scalability of continuing the AI boom and AI development uh, through the rest of this decade, right, it's going to be a huge challenge. Now, at, all, at Solidime, we're really looking at that challenge as more of an opportunity, you know, for us specifically, you know, which is kind of cool. Uh, but whether we're talking about the power limitations that you talked about, the performance right. limitations, the, the size of the data sets that are going to be used inside training, you know, all those are really seen as uh, scale challenges for being able to, you know, continue this AI development uh, whirlwind, right, that we've all been on for the, you know, past two years or so. Let's talk a little bit about the role that storage plays in this. I mean, it's just, it's just storage, right? Yeah, well, you know, we started with these huge uh, scalability challenges, right? We're talking about, okay, you're gonna build 50 nuclear power plants in the next couple of years to fix the problem? It's not going to be a single answer that's really going to do this, right? This has to be a multifaceted solution. Right. And, you know, transitioning from HDDs to data center SSDs is going to be a key part of that solution. So, you know, as an example, if we look at uh, power, uh, you know, latest projections are that it's, I think by the end of 2030, it's going to take, um, you know, data centers are going to take up something like 20% of the overall global power grid. I, like, it's like off the charts. Off the charts, yes. right? And you could solve that by building a bunch of nuclear power plants, but we're probably not going to be able to get that done. So one, th you know, and that data is pretty well known, but something that's not as well known, you, you talked about, you know, why is storage important? Right. There's more and more data, papers being, being written, about 30% of that data center power is taken up by the storage. Hmm. So it's not just these 
you know, big, heavy. And these hard drives? Yeah. To be clear? Okay. Yeah, yeah. they're hard drives today. Uh, they're about 90%, right? 90% yeah, HDDs in, in the uh, data centers today. Um, but it's not just these big, uh, power-hungry GPUs. People don't realize that they're being fed by a massive amount of storage to keep them going. And so if we can make a dent in that huge uh, storage bucket, we're ta really talking about a, a major impact uh, to this power and scalability challenge. Yeah, and I think we've seen uh, the growth of the storage and you know, pick your you know, pick your adventure. We can talk about parameters. We can talk about data points. Yeah. Like the the latest um, out of Chat GPT is 1.2, 1.6 trillion uh, data points. I'm sure there's a way to convert that into into parameters. But yeah. you know, it's funny in, in in the green room in the run up to this interview, uh, you had shown me a piece of data that that and Dan and I get hit with power stuff day in and day out, which was. There are actual grids out there in the United States that have either no power left or some absurdly small percentage left for data centers. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, and it's, and it, um, there's an article almost every other day in, in the big, big publications about it. But you know, take Northern Virginia, for example, which is a huge hub for data centers. Huge, um, yes. You know, they have like 0.2% headroom left in their grid. Uh, and so the, the data center build out is so strong and so fast that now it's bumped up against that limit. And it's also now the grid is the limiter to the build out of those, those data centers. And right now they're, they're primarily being built out for these uh, you know, large AI deployments. And just so everybody understands, that's just not the data centers competing with that. That's also potentially power required for EVs Power future, required for EVs, for homes, mm -hmm. uh, for for new buildings that are that are built here, and and for charging your iPhone. I, yeah, okay. a little bit. Got to be a little bit. Of a a little bit that. Yeah, but um, yeah. So a lot of choices there, and then you look at how long it takes to spin up a new power source, whether mm -hmm. it's solar, nuclear, coal, gas, something else. An extraordinary. It's typically those are five year projects. Exactly. So something has to give here. That's right. And you get into uh, some pretty interesting uh, spreadsheet exor exercises on what they do, but it's, it's clear that moving from hard drives to low power, high performance SSDs at, at, in those areas, is, it's almost a no brainer. Uh, yeah, but it's point. also, and yeah. it's the high density aspect of it too, it's the main driver. You know, if you... Uh, how, you bi know, how big? Well, just so we'll maybe talk about it in just just a okay. Just to close on this power angle, I think it's uh, you know the data. If you really go look at rack level replacements, et cetera, we're talking about like a sixty petabyte AI storage rack. Yeah, you can get an eighty percent power reduction by converting from HDDs to high density, high performance QLC SSDs. So now you're talking about twenty percent of the overall grid. Right you know, being taken for data centers, 30% of that data center storage, now you can reduce that number by 80%. We're talking about really big, impactful numbers now. So there could potentially be uh, big advantages from not just yeah. those new AI servers, but yeah. also potentially looking at your entire fleet of, of servers out there. Yeah, exactly. And okay. that's just power. I think, uh, you know, the other, Key driver of the scalability is going to be the performance requirements because, you know, what we're finding, what we're hearing from customers, right, Greg, is that a lot of the GPUs that they've all been building out with really starting to get underutilized because of yeah. the underappreciation of the, the data being fed into the GPUs is effectively kind of starving the GPUs right now. So there's an underutilization right. problem that's happening, and that's really slowing down the benefits, really, that we're getting out of AI. Point. Yeah, the, the GPUs, as well as the data scientists who use the GPUs, who, yeah. you know, as everyone knows now, are you know hot, hottest commodity employees out there, and so you know it's almost too expensive not to convert from hard drives to SSDs, uh, even though the you know at a capex level it might look a little bit, you know, SSDs look a little bit higher than HDDs, but when you put put the uh, total solution together, it's you know all the biggest new AI data centers are designing in these high capacity uh, SSDs. 
Yeah, you'll hear me talk to no end about the, it, it's the math, it's the economics, and we actually have some real world problems we're gonna try to solve, and of course, we will figure those out first, meaning, you know, we spend a lot of time here talking about power and availability. The first thing we'll solve at sort of any cost is gonna be enough power to make sure that we can continue this build out. You've seen what the market for GPUs grow to, we've heard numbers as big as 400 billion on the TAM. Yeah. It's huge, and of course, every company, I always talk about the deflationary aspects of tech. Right now, as companies need to figure out how to keep hitting their numbers, they need to keep doing it more and more efficiently. Yep. AI is an enabler of that. But in the end, the economics come down to things like what you're doing with SSD. It comes down to saying, how do we get down from four racks to two racks? How do we optimize power in those racks? How do we maximize utilization of GPUs or, or more efficiency from that same GPU? Yep. So this question is the, this is the money maker for, for you and David, <laughs> throw it your way, is, is you know, oftentimes this particular category uh, can be a bit treated a bit as a commodity. Uh -huh. What you've said today doesn't sound anything like a commodity, but what's your sort of winning formula for you know, being able to grab the AI market right now? What's the Solidime winning formula competitively, performance-wise, and of course I've spent a little time on economics. Well, we're, I've definitely seen a transition even, you know, I, I think Greg and I have both been in this industry going back for Flash for 30 years. And uh, you know, there's been times where it's you know, comes and come and goes with a, a commodity look and feel to the, yeah. to the market, of course. And we're coming out of a pretty heavy downturn of the last couple of years. Uh, but we're seeing an excitement now that we've never seen before. And this is really just over the past couple of quarters because people are really, you know, now really appreciating the importance of the bottlenecks that are created by data center storage. And it's now it's as that data is transitioning from being cold and just sitting there not, not being used, not being read, to now being more and more data getting generated, more and more of it wanting to be read and utilized all the time, yeah, we're getting a tremendous pull from our customers already. So the, you know, the products are really, uh, you know, we've got the kind of in the right place at the right time right now with our, our high performance, high density QLC. Um, and you know, we talked about the 80% power reduction. Just to finish that thought on performance, one way we you know we kind of look at it is this GPU utilization factor. Right. It takes you know one of our P5336s to keep five GPUs fully utilized, more than 90%. The inverse, if you were gonna, it takes um, I think eight HDDs to keep one H100 fully utilized. So we're talking about 40 to 1 factors. These are not incremental improvements that we're talking about in power performance. At the data center level, these are monumental changes, right, that, that really are going to be the key driver. Well, it's very interesting. Um, you know, Greg will appreciate this. I'll play marketer for a moment, but I'll throw one more thing. You have to? Yeah. No, I can't help myself. Um, so focus. You know, a lot of times, and one of the things that, you know, in a recent briefing I was, uh, you know, attended from Solidime, I thought was very interesting, is pretty much everyone that you compete with has a broad focus across consumer, data center. Um, you've chosen to completely focus on this problem, and in the, you kind of, the AI era, yeah. and the problem related to data, and enterprise data and data centers, it's unique to have a company that's saying, this is the one thing, and we're all in. How big is that to your ability to execute on AI? I, I think it's huge. I mean, in, you know, we have, uh, all, like you said, all of our engineers working on, with our customers, you know, deeply with our customers, understanding their workloads, understanding what they see in the future, and you know, it allows us to tune our drives to meet their workload specifically, right. but it's also enabled us to focus on what's this, what's this next wave of, of kind of what I would call data center evolution, which is not hard drives going away ever, but some of them you know, giving away to flash. And so we've been investing in the highest capacity flash drives. So we have 30 and 60 terabyte SSDs. We launched them last year. We're way ahead of our competition you know, from that perspective. Uh, and we've been investing in uh, QLC technology to make those drives uh, very affordable. Uh, compared to I existing flash technologies. We're actually in our fourth generation of uh, QLC as we speak. 
Yeah, probably just to close on that thought, um, you know, when we talk about high performance, high density, the key driver is this QLC and the multi-level cell technology. And this is where we're storing more logical bits for every single flash, physical flash shell that's sitting there. When we get to QLC, we're, you know, 16 level, 16 different states, right, that yes. we're storing in the physical flash cell. That's the only way to really, you know, bring this value to the customers. And um, that has been our focus. That's why we're on our fourth gen right now in the data center. And Comp is really just trying to still commercialize really their first generation. Well, Greg and David, I want to thank you so much for being part of this year's 6.5 Summit. I hope to have you back. And uh, we'll be watching closely. We'll be watching Solidime and we'll be watching this AI evolution and revolution. So uh, stay tuned and join us again if you wouldn't mind. So well, thanks for having us. We appreciate it. Yeah, Absolutely. Thanks, guys. It's been fun. All right, everyone, we are here. It is 6.5 Summit 2024, day one. We are in the cloud and infrastructure track. You just heard from Solidine, but stay with us for all of our content here. This year's 6.5 Summit is bigger than ever. See you soon.